Welcome to our segment on the Mixer panel. The Mixer can be opened by clicking on the Mixer button in the toolbar. Or you can select Devices, Mixer, and you can also just press F3 on your keyboard as well. That's a shortcut. In Cubase SX, you can open three mixers. In Cubase SL, you can open two mixers. And in SE and LE, only one mixer. All mixer panels are the same. It's just a matter of convenience, especially when you're working with big projects. Having more than one mixer open at the same time allows you to see different sets of channels in different mixers. For example, one mixer can show you all your MIDI channels, and another one can show you all your audio channels. Let's close these. Okay, right click, activate always on top. Each section of the mixer is resizable. The first section of the mixer contains strips which represent corresponding input buses. We created these buses in the VST Connections panel earlier in this course. The VST Connections panel is accessible by clicking on this button. You can rename your channels right here. Double click and type your new name. Each channel has a volume fader. You can drag that up and down. The pan control lets you position the sound between the right and left positions of the stereo channels. Holding down the shift key and moving the pan control lets you make a fine pan adjustment. Clicking on the pan control area and holding down the control key at the same time will return the pan control to its center position. In Cubase SX, you can choose one of three pan modes. You do this by right clicking on the pan control area. Stereo Balance Panner shifts the balance between the left and right channels. Stereo Dual Panner lets you position the left and right pans independently. Our last option is Stereo Combined Panner. Hold down your keyboard's Alt key and then set the left and right pan controls. You can also left click and drag your mouse left to right, up and down. If you reverse the pan controls, this area will change color. Here is our mute button. Input channels don't have solo buttons. Read and write automation buttons are here and they're going to be covered later in this course. Click on this button and that'll open your VST input channel settings window. Right click and choose always on top. Here you can insert audio effects. In Cubase SX, the first six slots are located before the EQ and volume faders. The last two are after. In Cubase SL, you've got five slots before the EQ and volume faders, and only one after, and also only on the output channels. Adjust your equalizer curve manually
or you can choose one of the presets from the drop down menu. Reset your channel button, reset inserts, and use this to reset your EQ. This button lets you bypass all inserts, and this one in each insert individually. This button here bypasses the EQ. You can jump between VST channel settings windows by clicking on the small triangle here. Choose the VST channel settings from the drop down menu. This small gray icon indicates the type of channel. The audio level clipping is here, and this turns red when the audio signal goes above zero decibels. A left click will reset it. In this window is a numerical representation of the volume fader position. Hold down your control key, left click here, and that'll reset the indicator to zero. This here is your peak meter value. Let me demonstrate this. Right now your incoming signal peaked at minus 2.3 decibels. After I increase the signal output level on my keyboard, the meter peaks at plus 2 dB and triggers the clip indicator. In Cubase SX, you can compensate the level of the incoming signal by using the input gain knob. OK, let's extend the mixer panel by clicking here. In order to adjust the gain control, you have to hold your Shift or Alt keys and then left click and drag the mouse. I will set the input gain at minus 1 decibels, then I reset the clip indicator, and as you can see now the signal level stays below 0 decibels. As a general rule, don't let your signal bounce just below 0 decibels. You want to give yourself some headroom. Audio and output channels have this feature as well. Don't use your input gain control as volume control. You should adjust the input gain once and leave it alone for the length of your project. Of course, clipping is less of an issue if you are recording in 24 or 32 bit depth resolution. If you need to free up some mixer panel space, narrow the channel strips by clicking right here. The next feature, which appears in Cubase SX only, is the input phase switch. When activated, the signal phase polarity is inverted. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to use two audio tracks I'll route the input from the same source, the keyboard in my case. I route it to both of these tracks, and I switch on my monitor buttons, and we are able to hear some incoming signal. Let me invert the phase polarity on the first track. As a result, the signals from the first and second tracks cancel each other out. So now we don't hear anything coming out of the output bus, even though there's definite signs of activity on both channels. This is an example of, let's say, perfect cancellation. But in the real world, you're probably going to get something like this, some partial cancellation with some resulting audio.
In the second section of the mixer, you see corresponding channel tracks created in the project window. You can create tracks in the mixer itself as well. Right click, add track, MIDI. Let's create a few more tracks, such as an effects channel, And what about a group track? When you shuffle tracks in the tracks list, the corresponding channels in the mixer move as well. Click on this bar to make the channel active. You can activate more than one channel at the same time. Hold down the Shift key in order to select a few channels at one time. Or hold down Control to select the individual channels that you want. You can also link these channels together. Right click, select Link Channels, Volume Fader, Mute, Solo Buttons, Monitor, and the Record Enable buttons are now linked together. Right click and select Unlink Channels. Here's where you color code your channels. If you don't see the input and output panel, click here. The input and output panel is one place where you can choose inputs and outputs. Select from these drop down menus. Outputs can be routed to group channels or output buses. VST instruments. and rewire applications such as Reason represented in the mixer panel as well. The last section of our mixer contains output buses and the audition bus. Output buses are used to monitor a project, but through the Audition bus, on the other hand, you can monitor scrub and play tools, You can also monitor your metronome clicks. Etc. Here's where you create your custom preset view. This is a visual representation of your mixer only and doesn't really change the channel settings. Keep that in mind. Here, you can hide 
or show different types of channels such as audio channels, MIDI channels, output channels, group channels, etc. Or you can activate activate that can hide options on particular channels and hide or show them by clicking on this button. Here you can copy selected channel settings and then paste these settings to another channel. Extended channel strips options are available in Cubase SX only. They can be accessed by clicking here. You can choose parameters to view in the extended section of this mixer from this drop down menu. Or you can also click on this button. And this concludes our segment on the mixer panel.